So after driving my BYD Seal Dynamic for about a month, I finally brought it to an EV charging station. In this video, I'll talk about what I've learned about all my charging options and compare the two extremes of charging using my BYD Mode 2 Portable Home Charger versus the 50kW DC Fast Charger, as well as how to identify the different charging system. Hi everyone, welcome to another Sky Perspective video. By and large, we have three types of charging electricity supply, both at home and at the public charging station. All of them supply electricity using different ways and at different power. I'll talk about all these different types and which one I plan to use at the later part of this video. It's interesting why my BYD seal plugging into a three-phase AC charger uses only one out of the three phases. So for example, a 22 kilowatt three-phase AC only charges the BYD seal at 7 kilowatts. So don't waste your money installing a three-phase charger at home as BYD seal can only charge at one-third of a three-phase AC power supply. By the way, I'm not an expert in electrical stuff, just sharing what I've learned and if I've got anything wrong, please correct me and I'll update my video description with the correct info. So with my first attempt charging at the EV charging station, I went with Elanga Charging Network. Not because this brand is good or anything, it's just because their 50 kW DC fast chargers are the closest to where I live. In fact, I think Elanga is one of the more expensive EV charging brands in Australia. Now, installing the Elanga app is fairly straightforward. They use Stripe Payment Gateway to collect payment. And after surrendering my personal details, address, credit card information, I can activate the charging station using their app and it works pretty well. There is a charging station number on the app and also near the charging plug. We just need to make sure that we are at the right station number. There are various different types of charging connectors as well. So for BYD seal, we need to use the CCS connector. And because this is DC fast charging, it's using the extended CCS combo charger with that extra two pins at the bottom. With that extra two pins, and because this is a 50 kW high electrical load charger, the cable and the connector are a lot heavier compared to the portable charger without the extra two pins at the bottom. So all we now need to do is swipe to charge, and then choose on the charger screen which connector are we using. The charging station is now negotiating together with the car and there we go, it, start, it started charging. After the car and the charging station negotiated, it's charging at 46.4 kilowatt and my BYD seal battery is at 38% and the car estimates it will charge about 58 minutes to come to a full charge. The time is 10.54 a.m. now and I'll show you the charging progress every 10 minutes. We are about nine and a half minutes in and I'm at the shops now, checking both the BYD app and the Elanga app. The DC fast charger has already filled up 7% of the battery and charging rate seems to have stayed the same at about 46.5 kilowatt. On the Elanga app, it shows us it has delivered 6.56 kilowatt hour of power over this nine and a half minutes and I'll be paying $4.26. If we decide this is good enough and I don't want to pay any more to charge anymore, we can swipe to end the charge from the app. I don't need to run back to the charging station to stop the charge. Take note that the range is now 231 kilometers, and we'll check back in 10 minutes later to see what it is. Okay, so it's 11.10 a.m. now and we have charged another 12% of the battery and gained 60 km of range over the last 10 minutes. And the Elanga app shows about 8 kilowatt hour have been charged into the car battery at this point. By the way, do you know what's the difference between the two units of measure, the kilowatt and kilowatt hour? I myself is figuring this out too and this is how I see them. 
when we are talking about the power or the energy or the strength of the charge or the capability of a charger, we use the unit kilowatt. And when we are talking about the usage amount, the size of the battery or the capacity, we use the unit kilowatt hour. So when we say the size of the BYD seal car battery is 61 kilowatt hour, that means it can deliver 61 kilowatt of power for an hour. So just remember, power and energy, we use kilowatt. The usage amount, size and capacity, we use kilowatt hour. Okay, another 10 minutes have passed. It's 11.20 a.m. now and we've got another 10% of charge into the battery and 52 kilometers of range. This is interesting. The previous 10 minutes, we've got 12% and 60 kilometers of range. Let's see what we get in the next 10 minutes. Oh, and the Elanga app is showing we've got 7.4 kilowatt hour of charge into the battery for this 10 minutes round. It's 11.30 a.m. now, so this time 11% of charge, 54 kilometers of range, and this time I notice the charging power has dropped down to 45.5 kilowatts, and 8.2 kilowatts hour has been delivered into the battery. Let's see if the charging power continues to drop after we hit 80% of the battery charge. By the way, if you find this video useful so far, please hit that like button now so this video can spread to more people. Thanks. Okay, it's 11.40 a.m. now and over the last 10 minutes, we've got another 10% of charge and 56 kilometers of range and 7.3 kilowatts hours has been delivered into the battery. I noticed the power has now dropped to only 33 kilowatt. This is interesting. Even though we are over 80% battery capacity, we are still getting about the same amount of charge for the last 10 minutes. Okay, 11.50 a.m. This time, it's really slowing down. It's down to 13 kilowatt of power now, and we've got only 8% of charge and 40 kilometers of range for the last 10 minutes. Okay, another 10 minutes have passed, and it's 12 noon now. It's almost there, but not quite. It's at 99% battery capacity. So over the last 10 minutes, only 3% and 14 kilometers of range has been added and charged into the battery. And the power has slowed down to only 11.1 kilowatt. And then... Finally, it took a couple more minutes to finish charging at 12.02 p.m. And Ilanga sent me this invoice straight away. So in summary, the 50 kilowatt DC fast charger took about one hour to charge from 38% to 100% of the BYD seal battery. Now, this is super fast compared to the portable charger I've been using charging at home. I've made another video about the BYD supplied portable charger took about 3 nights to charge from 30% to 100% because it's only charging at 1.5 kilowatt as compared to the DC fast charger today we are charging at 50 kilowatt. Now, having said that, in terms of lifestyle and convenience, using the portable charger at home is still more appealing to me. Even though it will take me three nights, I don't have to be stuck in a shopping center for one hour waiting for it to finish charging because I'm in the comfort of my own home while it's charging over that three nights. All I have to do is go home, plug it in and do my things at home. Not to mention, the price of my home electricity is half the price of the Ilanga DC charging station. Let me interrupt the video for a second. In case you are wondering where I got this wall cable organizer, it's the $5 IKEA spice rack I found in the kitchen section of the IKEA store. And I can keep the protective cover on when not in use, instead of plugging it into a wall cable holder where I can't have the protective cover on. Okay, back to the video. So, how do we identify which type of charger is DC or AC, 
single phase or three phase? The easiest way is to look at the connector pins, ignoring the top two pins. For single phase AC, there are only three connecting pins in the middle. These three connecting pins are like our home three pin wall socket, where there is a pin for earth, a pin for neutral, and a pin for the live positive AC current. So when we see there are only three pins in the middle without the bottom two pins, we know this is charging on a single phase AC. With three phase AC, there are these two extra bottom pins for the second and third phase of the live positive AC current pins. And as for DC fast charging, there is only the center earth pin and these two huge pins at the bottom of the extended housing. All the other four pins on the top part of the connector are not required. So with all these options, AC three-phase is a no-go for me because plugging in my BYD seal to a three-phase AC charger, it will only charge single-phase AC of up to 7 kW. With DC fast charging, BYD seal can take up to 110 kW. See this 22 kW AC, 43 kW AC on the Elanga app and the Plug Share app? They are all three-phase AC charging. Yeah, PlugShare app is the other great informative app using crowdsourced information. Now, my only other option is to install a single-phase AC 7kW charger at home, but that will cost me $1,000 or more. So I'm going to try to survive with my BYD 1.5kW portable charger charging three nights every three weeks and with the last resort just to do a DC fast charging top up at the charging station whenever necessary. This week I'm starting to go back to my normal driving to work routine after the end of year Christmas holidays and I'm going to plot out my driving consumption and charging pattern using this calendar for the next one to two months. So, do you think I can survive with my super slow BYD 1.5kW portable Mode 2 charger? And how many times do you think I need to go to a DC fast charger to top up in this upcoming two months? Subscribe if you don't want to miss this. And don't forget to help me share this video if you find it useful. Oh, on to the last tip. I just mentioned BYD 1.5kW portable Mode 2 charger. So on my chart, this is mode 2, this is mode 3, and this is mode 4. I hope you find this video informative, and thanks for watching till the end. I'll see you in the next video.